Do we have any here? Um, do you guys want to go? This is a sale that we were talking about. Go to your... Uh, oh, it's toward the end. Field the picture looks one. like this. Yeah, field step one. When we started this, and things have changed a little bit, but the primary motivation behind this, and you've seen uh, Peter's uh, slide, we have 20,000 acres of ash. So this is pre-EAB. We thought, you know, we got to do something with this, and we had a couple of goals. One was obviously to harvest some of the valuable products out of these ash stands, which we have a lot of, and nothing had been really been done in them. And number two is regeneration, and that really hasn't changed, except you know, with EAB, we're looking at different kinds of regeneration. Um, Trying to supplement the ash. So, we, in order to come up with this, there really isn't a lot on ash. So we, we looked what what had been done previously in, in Aiton County here, and in uh, some of the things that had been done was, you know, we had all did clear cuts back in the late 80s, 90s for firewood, and and they didn't work real well. I mean, I ended up with a lot of alders and cattails, and, and so that really wasn't uh, feasible. Um, we did a lot of veneer cutting, which is really a single tree selection type thing. We marked the trees, didn't take a lot out, got rid of a high value product, we got able to sell it, the loggers were able to cut it, but once again it did nothing for regeneration. So we started looking at, you know, what did work, you know, and, and, and some of the things that did work were in those old field wood days, the guy had won a 10 cord permit, a 20 cord permit, and he'd cut it and too much work, I ain't never doing that again. And, and it came back, you know, and, it, and those little cuts work, you know. Looked at some of the stump limit uh, sales. What you see here was all stump limit out from the last, probably the 40s, probably even before that. It, but it, it was, what happened, and we're not going to go to that site, but we'll talk about that site. But we noticed that some of those stump limit sales where they made holes, you know, they maybe not perfect holes like this, but they were strips or holes or some type of a opening, probably had a nice firewood, you know, contract or something, and they, they would clean cut them, and they were filled with regeneration. And so we thought, well, okay, that's, that's a start. You know? But what we didn't want to do, you know, we got thousands of acres of oak and northern hardwood that we individually paint. It, it takes a lot of time. We weren't going to start painting our ash. You know, it's just a, it's a very time-consuming so, and, and in most of these ash are, you know, this varies in age, but some of them are 140 years old. You know, they're not going to respond a lot. I mean, it's, so that once again, the main goal of, the, of doing this was regeneration, not necessarily put more growth on the existing trees. So we came up with a method where we go out, we put the hole where we think it should be based on what I call high-risk trees. Those high-risk trees might be 20-inch veneer trees. They might be from you know, more pulpwood trees or whatever, but it's trees that you think you have to get out of there. You certainly won't want to put one in an area that's full of pole-sized timber that's going to, you know, be there for many years. So we go out, and how we do it, we didn't start off that way. We put, we just painted the trees, went to the next spot, painted the trees. Well, then what, the problem with that is when the logger got the sale, nobody knew where the holes were. <laughs> that, was, that was a problem. So we switched it. We GPS each tree, and really what we do, we, we look for a spot, we paint the tree, we GPS it, and we take a, a, a cruise. It's a 10-factor cruise. You know, it's a five-minute job. Go to the next one, and, and, and you can cruise up wood really, really fast. It's really, really efficient. Well, Bob, you're, you're, you're painting the anchor tree in the middle. Yeah, and that tree is to be left. That was the other thing that we learned along the way, because sometimes all of a sudden... Like, wait a minute, where was this all? <laughs> uh, but the GPS and was really kind of, it worked really well. And uh, uh, in fact, so well, I know uh, when they were cutting the sale, I got a call from the logger and he says, Bob, he says, you don't have no tree marks here, but my GPS says I'm supposed to be here. I said, that's good enough. You know, and the tree fell down or whatever, so it worked out good. So we're able to cruise these up pretty efficiently. I think the logger... They get to have, they get more volume out versus a thinning. You know, they're 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 going to a spot, they're clear cut, and they're going to the next spot. Uh, you know, there's some issues, you know, in terms of you know how to locate your skid trails and that. But for the most part, it seems to work, I think, pretty well. Uh, what we're not doing, and what you probably seen like on Peter's demonstration, he talked about, you know, where the regen was at, and he said, you know, six fours aren't doing real good, and and quite frankly, they 
not only you don't get regeneration in them, but it's it's, it's so so. And it, it, so we don't really waste our time on 15 quarter acre of ash, you know, stands. I mean, we just we'll let you guys experiment with that. <laughs> but so we we try to hit our better ash stands, and, and those are the stands that are not only going to sell, but they're also the stands that are going to regenerate. The, the 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 better quality stands you got, the more likely you're going to regenerate it. Uh, and more likely you're going to see other species coming in there. Those real wet sites, they're really kind of limited to ash, you know. I mean, you're not going to get a lot else in there. Whereas this site, I was looking on the card on it, and we have records that go back to whenever it's forfeited. So this was back to the 40s. And then at one time, there was a lot of elm in here, you know. And, and they, but they've been cutting in here steady. But it, what happens, I think, in the single tree selection, one, you don't get the real nice regeneration. And if you do, and if you look throughout there, you see all these trees that are kind of suppressed. You know, they're, they're, they're over top by bigger trees, and you just don't get the growth on them that you probably should. And that's one of the reasons we went to these openings. So you cut it, you leave it alone, and let it grow. And, and maybe on a real great site like this, you can go do individual tree selection later on. But most of our ash sites, you know, where you're looking at 16-inch you know, trees type thing, you're probably, we're looking at a two, you know, three, four entries and you're done with it and you're just going back to that site again and you know and whenever it's ready to go and do it that way i mean you have the option of doing an individual section in between doing the thinning but i'm not sure how feasible that is the way the market right now is this so, a stand where they said 20 to 30 percent was removed in the groups this is about 25 percent in, in openings and they'd want to come back maybe like every 10 years you know and i don't know exactly you know that varies so much mm -hmm. you know in this stand there is areas where there's there's younger pockets, you know, so obviously would you got to come back and, you know, no, but there's a lot of bigger wood that still has to come out of here, so I don't think you want to wait too long. You know, I think it comes down to how soon do you want to go through it. And I think every stand is different. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if you got a lot of different, if you got some different age classes, it'd be a different story. I mean, the stand that we're going to go to the next site, but we, I think we decided we're going to do it all here, it was really a... Uh, it was one of those stands that why we decided to do this. It was a, it was heavily. It had three distinct age classes. It was pretty cool how it worked. Forty years ago, somebody it was a stump limit sale, cut hearts. About a hundred years ago, there was another cut in there, and then before that, whenever. But so it ranged in stand from like forty years to 135 years. You know, and I basically went in there, and took out that 135 year class, which is about 35 percent, left a little bit of it. I, I can see waiting another. You know, it might be 30 years or whatever, cutting that 100-year class, you know, or 20 years, whatever it may be. And then, you know, so, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, eventually that's what it's going to be. So. I caught how the middle of the gap is designated, but how is the edge of the gap designated? Okay, good question. Um, what it is, it's a logger select cut. And uh, so this is a 160-foot circle. It's a half an acre, approximately. It, 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 it's up to the logger. We've talked about this, and I think it would be easier on the logger if we had marked that tree, and maybe as we mark, go to the next stand, we mark 80 feet and give them a reference point. But otherwise, they're doing it themselves. So it varies. They might be 10, 15 feet off. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I mean, it's uh, you're, you're not going to go you're not going to go nail them for stealing trees if they're 10 feet over the line. You know, I mean, you got to be. got remember, this is a shortcut for us too. So it's not perfect. You know, it's the same right. One thing I've thought about, I haven't tried it out, but if you want a small gap and you've got to cut the length distance, you can have the operator just pivot and and cut whatever whatever you can reach, and you're going to have a 30 foot radius. If you want a large gap. After he does that, have him go around the perimeter of that small gap and reach out as far as you can reach, and you got a 60. Sure. Yeah. But for the most part, they some guys will actually go market. I mean, this is a cut to length operation, so you know they're not going to get out, and so they just estimate. They have to get they mark. I think Lynn would have been there. He marked a couple of them, but for the most part, they did a really good job. I mean, it, it's right where it's supposed to be. But I've had guys that actually go put you know four ribbons out. You know, so it, it varies. Are you hooking them up with, G just logistically, are you hooking them up with GPSs or do they just supply their own GPSs? How do you do that? They supply their own GPSs, but we'll download, upload, or whatever you want to call it, the information for them. And in this case, the guy had a, he has a newbie, 
So we ended up taking that with like a Tom Tom, and we put the information on that also, and that worked out really well. Yeah, turn right at the next day. So. <laughs> <laughs> we were hoping we'd somehow program it, you know, so we could put the remarks in there, but I didn't. <laughs> I really wanted to do that, but I couldn't swing that one. So. You have a number of different logging firms then bidding on your project? Yeah, it, it goes up for a public auction process. And, uh, uh, they can bid on in this case. Uh, you got a pretty Midwest. good size pool then that you're working with in the county? Oh, yeah. But in this case, only one, it was sold for a price price, you know. This is a new concept, you know, and it's, it's people are somewhat unsure of it. And as a result, I think you, it's, you've got to sell us. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't, uh, they're just not going to come running up and pound the door down and get it. You know? and, but the ones that did it seem to like it, so... And we've, so I've sold several informal sales just to get this kind of going, and and Tom and Dan have both did the same thing. The other two foresters, you know, trying to sell it. It, it, it seems like it's working. And these well, gaps, me, go ahead. Well, we really started to focus on trying to make these operable. If there was enough volume coming out of there to make it worthwhile for somebody to go in, and I guess the loggers can talk about how that all works. But you know, because. We get revenue off of that, and then that gives us the ability to maybe hire a guy like Peter, and, and he's not cheap. So we <laughs> do some of this research so we can find out a little bit more about this stuff. So it all kind of works together. You got to have the markets, you got to have the loggers that are, have the skill set to do it, and you know put it all together. Um, we're fortunate we got our got our loggers the, here today. <laughs> they don't be hide, and they did, like I said, they did an outstanding job, and. And Tom, if you'd want to talk a little bit, or if you guys got questions for Tom in terms of how. Oh, what? Um, other than aesthetics, why wouldn't you just do a strip cut through here? You know, take your 16 mm -hmm. or 20 foot wide strip, run it where you did for Winthrop, and then leave a 50 or 60 foot strip. Yeah, I think you maybe could not think about that. And I actually, we talked about that years ago. But you know, it's fine. I think if you got a pine stand and everything is uniform, and this is probably as uniform of an ash stand as we got. But the reality, our ash stands aren't like that. Yeah. I mean, they're not this. This is 110 acres. That's probably pretty uniform. But you know, to me, the trees that should be taken out are the trees that you know, whether it's the the real big trees or trees, you know, got some dieback, whatever. And that's what should be taken out. Because if I were to run a strip through here. I would be going, I, I'll guarantee you, I'd be going through some younger stuff in some of those strips and then some older stuff. You know, so I mean, I don't know if that's any easier or harder, but I think this way you hit the spots that should be hit. And sometimes we put double double holes, you know, if we see an area that we think should be taken out there. But yeah, whatever works for people, I guess. You can make nice designs and you can keep them in the air with these circles. And <laughs> <laughs> but most of our action is big. <laughs> Big uniform stands, you know, they're, they're quite, they're, they, they vary a lot. <laughs>